All right, today I wanted to go ahead and um, install an extra uh, PoE security camera. And this one I'm going to install on the garage and have it facing towards the back of the house. Because the way the cameras are set up right now, you can't see the back of the house. You can just see the garage. So this is like added protection. Now the issue is I don't have internet in the garage and I don't use wireless security cameras. So I have to basically run ethernet cable out to the garage so that I will have the ability to use um, networked or PoE um, security cameras. Now I have a, I'm going to dig a little trench going from the side of the house over to the garage. Now I started digging the trench and I realized that going through the grass made it a little bit more difficult. So I went ahead and got the weed eater and of course the weed eater, weed eater battery is inside the garage, inside the house because I had them put up for the winter. So I went ahead and got the battery started weed eating as you can see right here. And just basically cutting a small little path all the way down to the dirt from the side of the house all the way to the garage. And of course uh, my weed eater for some reason does not feed the string automatically or it's supposed to but it doesn't. I have to manually pull string out which is annoying. Of course, we've had all this rain pretty much the past couple of weeks, but it hadn't rained in like three days, so the ground wasn't soppy wet, but it was still very soft, which in a lot of ways made this a lot easier. Just digging a little trench in soft dirt, obviously a lot easier than digging in hard, dry dirt. Of course now I have to get up these pavers so that I can actually bury the cable underneath the pavers. And of course the edger I have which I'm using to dig the trench it only goes down six inches which is fine. I mean it's just an ethernet cable if for some reason it gets damaged at some point in the future it's no big deal. I mean it's like $39 for a 250 foot of ethernet cable. Now this edger, I bought it from Amazon and I think it was like $40. And basically you're just sticking it in the, or you know, pushing it into the dirt with your foot and then rocking it back and forth in order to spread the dirt open in a little trench. It's about six inches deep and I'm only spreading open about one inch. Just wide enough to uh, push the cable down into the dirt. And actually, this, this part right here, uh, the trenching, it was probably a little bit easier than I thought it was going to be. That's the first time I've done anything like this, you know, as far as burying cable. Of course, with the dirt still pretty wet, sticking to the uh, edger, and I kept having to shake off the dirt which no big deal one of those things to be expected of course at this point it's like 40 degrees outside 
and I'm already starting to sweat. I don't know why I didn't go ahead and just take off the jacket because I was already at this point hot. You know how it is, fat people like me, we get hot easy. Well, have you ever seen such a white bald head in your life? Looks like I'm a fat, overweight vampire, so I'm as pale as I am. And I, actually, I was surprised I didn't run into uh, a lot of roots right there because we just cut down a tree this uh, um, summer, and the tree was probably 30 foot tall. That little center patch where you see the wood chippings, that's where they ate the stump up. But that whole area has roots. Apparently, they're just deeper than that trencher goes. And I will probably take and put another camera up front, pointing at the front of the house. Basically, same thing as what I've done here. The only issue with like rocks and stuff was right at the end because that whole area used to be covered in gravel years ago and there was obviously some chunks of gravel still in that in the dirt in that area. Now that I have the trench dug, which I should have done this part first, but I'm, now I'm basically just drilling a hole so that I can uh, start to mount the camera to the side and yeah realistically you should mount the camera up high where people can't reach and you should run the cables from inside but I'm not looking for you know ultra high security I have one camera pointing at another camera so if somebody messes with one of them they're gonna get called I mean it's just that simple because you can't go to one camera and not be seen by another camera. That's how I have my setup. And I don't live in a real high crime area or, or anything like that. Realistically, I just want to keep track on what's going on because I'm upstairs a lot. And when I'm upstairs, I can't hear anything of what's going on outside. But we ha have had a break in here before. The uh, Somebody broke into the garage, which they took some power tools and stuff like that. And also, I like uh, making videos of animals because at night, raccoons and possums and stuff like that come out and even the occasional deer I will see out in the front yard I pretty much got the camera mount at this point and now I need to go inside and get my glasses because I'm blind because I need to start assembling the cable because I need to put the little ethernet plug on the end of the cable because I just buy like a 250 foot roll spool of cable and then I build my own custom length cables and the cable I have it's made for direct burial
basically have the cable uh, mounted to the wall at the bottom with a, like a little screw and clip thing and uh, from there it goes directly into the ground and then I have another screw and clip thing up at the top uh, where it plugs into the camera's cable essentially I didn't actually plan on making a video about this until I was pretty much about this point, this far along. But I figured I had one camera point at me nearly the entire time and I'm soon going to have another camera as soon as this one gets plugged in and all that stuff. And of course, me being, you know, girthy like I am, um, every time I bend over to do stuff like this, I can't take deep breaths. I'm having to breathe shallow. So I get out of breath easy doing those things. And you'll see it here in a minute. I'll, uh, whenever I'm actually pushing the cable into the ground, I will bring my chair out here because I had this idea, well, if I'm having trouble breathing because I'm so heavy because I'm bent while bending over, then I'll just sit in a chair and then push the cable in. But that didn't work out very well. It actually made it worse. So I end up abandoning that idea. Right now I'm just unrolling the cable as best I can without it letting it get wound up and uh, running it over to the side of the house where I have a connection for my ethernet and I have a large flathead screwdriver that has a blunted tip on it and I'm using that to push the cable into the ground And I, that actually worked pretty good. And the uh, sleeve on this cable is very, very tough because it's made for direct burial. So there was virtually no chance of uh, that screwdriver damaging the cable. And this is where I got the bright idea to uh, use that chair. Of course, it didn't really help much matter of fact it just made it worse so I pretty much abandoned the chair that's what years of driving a truck and poor decisions does to you. You get fat. bringing that chair with me, with me because I have to use this so I can make the other end of the cable once I get it buried and up to the point where I need it to be. Unfortunately I don't have a camera angle of uh, what what I was doing over there because I didn't think this I didn't think about all this before I set out to make it make this video anyway. And here all I'm doing is grabbing a little paver to put up against uh, the cable where it comes up from the ground. That way, until I come up with a better solution, um, 
that way it will protect the cable from the, like the weed eater whenever I'm weed eating around the side of the house but more likely I'll have this a better solution uh, out, I'll have a better solution by then anyway by the time I need to start weed eating again I'll probably take like a uh, half of a PVC pipe and just kind of bury that uh, with it covering up the cable up against the house more likely something along those lines I'm not 100% sure yet and right now I'm I'm uh, putting the uh, a cable tester on the cable basically a piece at each end with a little lights and all it does is basically um, light up and tell you whether or not you have a continuity on all eight conductors within the ethernet cable and of course my battery was dead because last time I used it I left it on so it just run the battery dead and the only other battery I had was almost completely dead and it wasn't lighting up the lights bright enough for me to see in the sunlight so I had to swap the two ends around that way I could uh, see the lit up end um, in the shade on the side of the house and here I went inside to see if the camera was working and then I realized I forgot to actually unhook this from the tester and then hook it up to the camera that was a goober move on my part I think right here is where I actually activate that yep there it is and of course the cameras kind of cockeyed but I'll fix that here in a minute and I'm loading up my uh, software on my phone that way I, or my NVR on my phone that way I can see on my phone wh what the camera sees but it's one of those situations where you kind of need three hands Now I'm just basically stepping on the cable and uh, kind of closing up the uh, trench. Not not stepping on the cable, stepping on the dirt around where the trench is, and just kind of squeezing the uh, trench closed. And of course, before I got to this point, I had already stepped in a gopher hole and kind of twisted my ankle a little bit. So my ankle was a little sore when I was doing this. But give it a few months and you won't even be able to see. Well, you'll be able to see it because the grass hadn't grown. But um, once the grass starts growing, about a month into spring you won't even be able to see that there is a, a trench dug there which is one of the reasons why so many people use those uh, edgers to dig a trench because it doesn't tear up the yard very much it's the same way you would bury like um, uh, that 12 volt low voltage uh, cable for uh, low voltage uh, landscaping lights you would use the same process
and now at this point I'm just kind of cleaning up getting everything put up Throwing away my old battery that didn't work, that I run dead, putting up my cable. I probably have about, oh, maybe 180 feet of cable left. And I'm having to make one more hole to uh, kind of mount the loose part of the cable. Because I'm not going for perfection, just going for reliable, waterproof, and, uh, you know, functional. I'm definitely not a professional. Far, far from it. Yeah, at this point my ankle is killing me and I'm ready to be done with it and I th at this point I think I am done I make I go ahead and go inside and then I could not remember whether I closed up the box on the side of the house so I had to come back out here and uh, uh, check the side of the house just to make sure the box was closed and then whenever I'm walking back uh, I realized I didn't put my uh, shovel up, so I had to um, go inside, get the keys, and then come back out here, unlock the garage, and put the shovel up. Now I'm finished. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. Later, people.